Hey folks, welcome to this 2021 buyer's guide for everything to do with PC. Maybe you're getting into PC, you're new, you're just wanting to get a little bit more knowledge, you're coming from console and you're moving to the PC world and you're not really sure what to purchase and why. There's a lot of information out there, a lot of products out there and you don't want to get it wrong. It's a big investment and you don't want to get it wrong. All right, folks, so we've sat down and we have created five builds that I believe will get you sorted if you're interested in going from absolute entry level PC play to the ultimate sort of game in streaming content creation kind of machine. Okay, so the first one is a absolute entry level budget PC. This is for somebody that isn't really sure if they like PC, they want to jump in, they want to try some esports titles, but they also want to go ahead and actually play a few games at high settings and actually enjoy themselves. This isn't like a complete scrimp and save budget build, like the pre-builds you'll see on like marketplaces. This actually runs games well. Um, it can play, you know, if you, if you go, if you ever want to know how the system works, you can just type the system into YouTube with the processor. So if we were to take this processor like this here, and we were to then pair it with, say, a 1650 Super and look up benchmarks, I'm sure there'll be somebody that's done one. So here is exactly one. So if we're interested in, let's say, Fortnite, um, this setup here is looking to be giving him 132 average frame rate on Red Dead Redemption 2, a super graphically demanding game, 77 average frame rate, Rainbow Six Siege, it's going to be coming in at 178 frame rate, so it, it's not a it's not a crap system, right? It's not a crap system. It is a quad core processor which I used up until fairly recently. Yes, it's an i3 and it's Intel. People say i3 and Intel. It beats out the Ryzen 3300X. It's a good solid chip for entry level. It's paired with a micro ATX board that works. All of these parts work out of the gate. There's no updating or anything like that needed. No overclocking to get RAM to work. So plug and play effective stuff. Yes, it's micro ATX. It's a small one, but it doesn't affect performance in any way. It's a reputable, bra reputable brand of MSI. The RAM is Patriot Viper Elite 16 gig good um cast latency decent speed because that's the maximum speed this processor can run at it's 60 quid um we have 500 gig of storage ideally you'd have a terabyte of storage but we're on a budget and you obviously have a reputable brand because this is where you're storing your files so i've chosen crucial this is a hard drive uh sorry solid state drive i've used myself so i recommend it um, you're going to be able to install these esports games more than the super modern games that take up massive file size. So even though it's a bit penny pinchy on the size, the type of games you'll be playing probably are smaller anyway, so you can install more. The graphics card is like the sort of basic 1650 Super, which all kind of pre-built include, because it's just really good for price to performance. Prices obviously do vary because of GPU stocks, but you should be able to find this one for around 250 The case is a simple Fantex Eclipse P300, nice to build in, looks clean, not super fancy RGB, but it does, does what it needs and it doesn't hinder any of the parts. And it's paired with a 600 watt good brand, a Be Quiet bronze certified power supply. Um, don't worry, yes, the system won't pull 600 watts. You're not going to pull 600 watts from your wall. A power supply only uses what it needs. And the price difference between like a 450 watt and a 600 watt is nothing. So you may as well get the better quality one with more headroom. This is a really good entry level build. This is UK prices with tax included. So 645. You're going to be able to sit down and really enjoy yourself with this build. So we move on up into a sort of premium mid-range so this is slightly above mid-range because i feel like if you're going mid-range you may as well spend that tiny bit more and get a little bit better products so for this this is the intel version this is a 10600k which is arguably one of the best gaming cpus relative to price to performance on the market 
it's paired with a Noctua U12S cooler because it doesn't come with a stock cooler, so you need to buy one. And a Noctua is a really, really good brand. This will cool it perfectly well. It's paired with a full-size ATX Asus um, Tough gaming board. These boards are fantastic, no problems with them. VRMs are all right. Everything's decent on it. You don't need to update it. Um, also as well, you want to check these kind of type of things online because these type of things like processors, coolers, motherboards, RAM, they all have sales and also quite often they are tied in with like game promotions like buy this processor and get a free game and if you're really into that game, you can actually end up buying a more expensive processor, getting the better, getting the free game and it works out the same because you were going to buy the game anyway. The RAM is now do bear in mind this has 3200 it's actually 3600 but there is no option to select it from this website but 3600 is the same price it's 16 gig 3600 cl 16 memory it's pretty much like the best you can buy relative price to performance this time we've stepped up with a one terabyte ssd if you're feeling more comfortable and you want to go with an nvme they're about 100 to 110 pounds this time we've stepped it up in the case. This is a P400A. Um, nice mesh. It's got um, some RGB going on. Looks pretty decent. This is a more premium build. You want it to look a little bit nicer. And it's again paired with the 600 watt bronze rated CPU. And this time we've gone with a, a 3060 Ti. This is like... Um, this is around £410 if you can grab it for that. A 3060 Ti is like one of the only premium gpus i'd recommend or if you can find it which you probably won't a cheap 2070 super any of the, the the 20 series i wouldn't recommend but if you could find a cheap 2070 super that would suit mid-range but a 3060 ti is a brilliant card if you can grab it um for that sort of price it's going to allow you to play every modern game with decent settings push higher frame rates play in 1440p as well with like above 60 fps you're going to really enjoy yourself this is like a i've got a bit more money i'm committed to pc i want a nice experience this is perfect if you want to do the same premium mid-range build but go amd you can go for a 3600 cpu this comes with a cooler which is adequate Again, if you're wanting the cooler to be quiet, you can add the same cooler. Um, personally, I think the cooler is relatively fine for a 3600 though. This time we've gone with an ASRock B550. You could save a bit more money and get a, an M80X B450. But to keep this easy, a B550 will work out of the box with this processor. And I feel like someone may be getting into PC mid-range, cheaper AMD, might not want to do a BIOS update. So I think it's worth spending that extra 20 quid to avoid that. But you could save a little bit there if you went a B450 route. Again, we've gone with the crucial 3600 CL16. I know it says 3200, but we can't alter that on the website. But um, 16 gigs fine here. I probably would push it to 32 gig. The same for the mid-range, if you could, but 16 gigs fine for mid-range. I would probably actually say stick with 16 gig, to be honest. Next, you've got a one terabyte SSD again. We've got the same case and the same power supply and the same graphics card. So the only thing that's changed here is the processor and motherboard, and it's coming in about, about £100 cheaper for the AMD. The Intel build will get you slightly higher frame rates and it will run slightly cooler and quieter due to the cooler. If I was to pick between these two builds, I'd personally go the Intel route, but I know some people love AMD, even though this is actually just flat out better. Um, but I thought I'd give the option there because this you can penny pinch a little bit more here. You could go B550, uh, B450 and save like another like, 20 30 quid so 150 quid potential saving for going amd that's the that is like a free keyboard and mouse and mouse map if you want to look at it that way okay so next we're going to go into the the like ideal um gaming system for the 99 percent of you 
um this is what i feel like if you just have good money you just want to get into gaming you want to really sit down play high frame rates high quality games you want to go full pc master race and you want it to just be like you want it to last like four plus years and you want to just like enjoy every game that comes out this is what i'd pick 5600 x and this was available yesterday for like the full day in curries availability is getting better 5600 x is a ridiculously fast processor it annihilates everything yes it's not eight cores 12 cores but if you're wanting to multitask you'd probably step up further but if you wanted to just stream it's actually paired with a 3070 and you can stream on a 3070 perfectly so this is the i think the ideal build for 99 percent of people 5600x it's got a noctua d15s so it's got a little bit more ram um compatibility keeps it cool and quiet it's got a pretty expensive motherboard the reason for this is this motherboard comes with assassin's creed valhalla it comes with um if you buy one of these processors um, it comes with Far Cry. Um, if you do a review on MSI's website, you get £25 Steam credit and £15. I ended up getting about £100 worth of stuff from this motherboard when I bought it. So it's knocking off £100 off the price. You can even get, like I say, Far Cry. That's like another 50 quid. So the price is more like 1500 And, you know, it's got Wi-Fi the wi-fi is actually good i use it myself bluetooth works with your controllers I, 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 and as well yes you will need to update it to work but i've used the board myself i've updated it i've got a guide for it it works it works with your ram so that's what we've gone for for the ram we've gone just so you can see it this time 3600 ddl4 corsair vengeance rgb just because it looks nice you can also go the crucial which is what i've got 3600 when i made the system list i couldn't select it for some reason so get corsair vengeance get 32 gig we're going full premium here if you want to save a little bit of cash you could just go 16 gig personally i'd go 32 gig but if you did want to go ideal and still save money go 16 gig um on the ram that saves you 80 quid and you could if you were feeling confident even go a cheaper motherboard but i like the features and the stuff you get with this but this could come in at um a pretty good saving you know it's like 1500 with the free goodies you get off the motherboard you could save another 80 quid this could come in at about 1400 pound and it's such a good system this time we've gone for a one terabyte NVMe, super fast, no cables, premium, and we've paired it with a 3070. Yeah, you can go 3080, but I feel like that's going into another level of budget. And when you go to that level, you probably want to put other stuff with it. Um, but a 3070 lets you play 1440p, 144 hertz. It lets you go 4K, super high refresh rates. Again, we've gone with a p400a um case uh, a p400a digital case with the fans etc um you could also go p500a in case this cool is a bit of a tight fit they're basically the same price and we've stepped up to a 750 watt power supply but i feel like for the 99 percent of people out there that have got some spare cash this could come in at around 1400 to 1500 and you're just going to have an absolute blast. It's real premium, real quality, good frame rates. I, I don't really see any issue with it. If you want to now step up another level and go for the ultimate sort of PC build, this is kind of what I've ended up with. Um, and I just think it's a real solid build. It's at more, way more expensive, way more expensive, but this thing's going to last you a long ass time. It It's... You're not going to have any problems here. This is like a no corner cutting build. 5900X, a 12 core rapid top of the line CPU. 
you're buying this because you are content creating, you're rendering 3D, you're rendering videos, you're streaming on the processor. That's why you're picking this. You could, you could, if you wanted to save some money, pick this exact build, but put a 5600X in it, and it will still go like stink. But you might not be able to do rendering and like multi-core work as fast. But if you just want a game with the best frame rates possible, you could save like 400 quid and put a 5600X in here. We've got the same Noctua cooler, same motherboard, same 32 gig of RAM. We've actually got two terabytes of storage because I feel like if you go in full premium, you don't want to be scrimping around for storage. So we've gone for the two terabyte version of this um, NVMe, which I have, and it's really, really fast. Recommend it. We've got an RTX 3080. We've got the P500A case because this fits the Nocta in and it looks a bit better in my opinion. And we've gone up to an 850 watt power supply, um, gold rated. So it all works together. So I feel like you could do this one. You could do this exact one. And this would, these are like some really good options, I feel like. I'm going to link all of these part lists in the description. And what I will do now is I will just quickly edit it just so you can see what the price would be. Um, so if you go like this and edit it, and I was to put in a 5600X um, right now, 5600X. Um, and I was to save this, save as, let's call this, um, high-end gaming slash streaming machine, um, no workload, no workstation stuff. So if you're not a workstation and you don't need 12 cores, you just want to do high-end gaming and streaming, um, this is going to come in at. 1,900. So, um, I think you're saving a good amount there, and it's a killer machine. If you want to save even more money, and you want to just put a one terabyte in there, that's another hundred pounds you can save for 1,800. Um, but then I feel like you want two terabytes. So, hopefully this helps you. Leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, leave a like. And I'm going to do a long video now explaining how I chose all of the parts. So if you want to tweak this and you want to make your own build, you'll be more informed. But hopefully this helps those people that are moving from PC, um, moving from Xbox to PC. And these are some really good solid builds where there's no complicated stuff going on. It's going to work like out of the box, apart from like one processor that needs updating, but they all do. Um, when you get high end but yeah hopefully this helps you out here are some builds i'll link them in the description 